well, welcome, Tamer, and and, right. and uh, you'll see it's a, uh, it's a community of people who are quite experienced, many on project management, on change, on transformation and, and technology. I see Yolanda there as well. So it's it's a nice way to connect with everybody. Uh, it's very global. Uh, so welcome uh, to join us. I, I see Rosina. Good to see you back. How are you? Yeah, great to be here. Um, great to see you all. So um, yeah, sorry I'd missed the last couple of sessions, but very good to join you and be here. I'm very well, thank you. Can't complain at all. Hmm. Nice to see Just you. Busy with projects as always. Okay. <laughs> yeah, nice to see you too. Hakan, good to see you. Hello. Hello, Antonio and everyone. Um, let me introduce myself. Yeah, you're because new. This so, is the, yeah. Yes, I'm new. <clears throat> My name is Hakan Öztürk from Turkey. Uh, I'm a mechanical engineer and I had my uh, master's degree in automotive engineering. Then I heard that Antonio was teaching in uh, Solvay Business School, so I had my MBA uh, in Solvay. Um, I would like to join this group because I'm interested in international uh, business. Um, I had some experience in automotive, tractor, agricultural machinery, construction, swimming pool. At the moment, I'm leading a project of a swimming pool company, which is um, SME, uh, in order to have some business uh, it's a prefabricated swimming pool uh, it's a new business in um, uh, Turkey Turkey countries Arabic countries um, yeah uh, and thanks again to accept me in the group, Antonio. Welcome, welcome, Hakan. Um, so let me get started because I had to ask Terry to, so now we have volunteers from the group to present, which is great. You will see the list uh, already we had, um, where is that? Let me check uh, here, uh, who's in there. But Terry, uh, are you there? I didn't see you on the list, I was a bit worried. I was a bit worried. I couldn't get the link to work. Oh, uh, so uh, uh, I found uh, Rosina uh, on in, in uh, LinkedIn messages and I shot a message over to her. You got a link and, and sure enough, I'm one digit off on my link. That's all you need. So <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that was exciting there for a minute, but we're here. Great, great. Um, so the idea is that we will start uh, hearing what uh, Terry has been doing his work in, his research in, uh, something that we can learn. Um, and then uh, I would say, let's break out in rooms and see uh, what we can uh, take off of on us or, or give you as feedback as well. Uh, I would take it uh, kind of very interactive. And, and I look forward to what you're going to talk because I have no clue. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to discover it as you talk. Let me just put here quickly the sheet on the chat. If you all, anybody wants to present as well, um, you can just write it here in the, let me just quickly uh, to the chat <coughs> here, here it is. So it's, if you want to just present in, in the future, we're focusing ourselves to present and record it. Uh, one, one thing, um, Terry, I will make you co-host um, if you don't mind facilitating the breakouts, just breaking us in teams, I need to move into my phone now uh, to follow from my phone. Okay, so co-host, now you should be able to share and uh, I hope we, yeah, we learn from you. I look forward, I'm sure we'll do. Well, thank you very much. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, 
what were we all doing a year ago? You know, when this all began, uh, I was looking at my calendar a year ago and uh, I was in the process, uh, Oleg, uh, and I have spoken about it a few times. I was in the process of setting up my speaking year. I speak from the stage as, as Oleg does. And we were having some conversations in those days about, uh, I think it was Dubai or someplace. And then COVID hit and everything changed. Changed for all of you, changed for our clients, uh, changed our opportunities. Uh, and, and we began uh, this journey that uh, we're still on right now. And um, it has been an exciting year. And uh, today I'd like to talk about what some flexions are that, that I've seen both uh, in this group. We've made some uh, amazing friends and connections uh, that, with each other at various, various times. And uh, what does that look like? What does that look like going forward? We are digital. We're all used to jumping on a Zoom call for a connection call, those kinds of things. But now most of us are doing business right here because we still can't go anywhere. Uh, so we're in a kind of a lockdown still. And what kinds of opportunities could come out of this environment and, and going forward. One of the things is uh, the GIPI uh, movement to help people uh, in crisis in various different ways. And the groups are working uh, to this day, still keeping that going. So what I'd like to do is I'm just gonna drop people into, uh, into a chat room and um, ask yourselves in the chat, what would I be doing this time of year before COVID? And what am I doing now to make the, adjust, the adjustment psychologically? So let's see if we can uh, pop up, uh, if I can get the room to go. Everybody comes. That was over too quick. Yeah. Getting into some good some good conversations. That's great. I I apologize, Mark. I don't know why you pop up in as a red box and and unassigned or not joined. And I go, I don't know. I'll not just a, put you somewhere. Not a pro, not a problem. I enjoyed both groups. Uh, thank you. I, good, my good, question good, for you, good. Terry, is that I've had for a very long time is what does H E M mean? That comes in front of your name. His Excellency Ambassador. I'm a world ambassador oh. for refugees uh, from a nonprofit United Red Green uh, United Refugee Green Council of Cyprus. Okay. With that is a is a title I represent uh, globally and uh, the U.S. So thank thanks for asking. No. Should we address you as Your Excellency? No, you can call me <laughs> Terry. We're a little closer than than normal protocols, so that's fine. <laughs> The earth wind uh, is, I'm, I'm an American Indian, so uh, we call ourselves Turtle Islanders. Earth wind <laughs> is my tribal name. So mm. uh, if you were to look up Terry Nichols on the Google, you'd find about 20,000 of my closest friends in North America alone. So yeah. uh, to distinguish that, and it works quite well for the brand, is Terry Earthwind Nichols. Uh, there's only one in the world. So that works out extremely well. I'm very glad that, uh, <laughs> That makes it much easier. Good to know you. And where are you based? Uh, Asheville, North Carolina, Eastern US. About two and a half, uh, three miles uh, northeast of Atlanta. People seem to know where Atlanta, Chicago, and New York City is. <laughs> so that's, that's where I am. I've been there in the mountains. Very nice. Yes, I love it up here. Uh -huh. OK, so looks like we have uh, everybody back now. So I'm, uh, I, I got to get into the rooms and, and listen a little bit. And wow, great discussions. This could go an hour just by itself, I think. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and so uh, would anybody like to um, uh, give some feedback or, or 
you know, speak to the whole about uh, anything that came through in your breakout room. From yes, last year very to where you are point. now. I'd love to hear from her. Lourdes made a very interesting point in our last group. I'd like to hear, uh, maybe say that to everybody. Lourdes? Oh, she may have frozen. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anyone else? When she unfreezes, we'll we'll see if we can get some input. Um, Paula, how about you? Sure, sure. Um, so we're in, we were in group one, and uh, we had Peter drop in on us unexpectedly, but that was good because his feedback was great too. Um, so. It, I, we started off by with a comment about Yolanda's background, my comment, because I love libraries. So she had she has this great library background right now. And she said, well, I'm yeah, back. I spent a lot of <laughs> I spent a lot of time in, in libraries. And, you know, it was funny is that I ended up doing the same thing at the beginning of, uh, of that time because I'd like to do a lot of research. So we have a fabulous library system in um, uh, in my my city. And, uh, and, you know, Yolanda was also doing that and she was uh, meeting with clients and was trying to set up a WeWork style of uh, workspace. Uh, we can talk about that, Yolanda, because there is one in my city and I, I can give you all sorts of pointers. I used to uh, um, sit for in one as well. Anyway, um, so we were, um, she was saying that um, of the things that had changed for her was uh, during lockdown, noticing how bare supermarkets were, that there was always a run of or a shortage of things and that you just being being aware of that things aren't just going to be there because they've always been been there um, and being aware of the scarcity of, of material goods, you know, when we were talking about toilet paper, I, I didn't believe it when it first happened. I was fully stopped in my house when I moved in uh, to do work from home myself. And then, you know, when I had to do a run about a month later, because I'd normally buy things for about a month, I, I just couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't believe the changeover. And this was at a Walmart, which is usually stocked with everything. So, um, and it's always, you know, the one of the world's best suppliers. Not that I'm toting Walmart, but, you know, we all know that that normally they don't, if anybody's going to run out, it's not going to be them. Um, but, uh, but it was interesting because afterwards, um, Yolanda said that she was um, able to spend more time with her daughter, um, do her gym work at home because she invested in a gym and in some gym equipment. And, you know, meeting with coffee instead of going out to coffee with her clients, meeting over coffee, um, but through Zoom, you know. So it uh, was an opportunity for, for her to continue the, the conversations that she had before, but in a more virtual way, but at least spend more time with your, with your family. And I know that um, Hakan uh, was talking about his project that he was, he was in Vienna at the time, instead of setting up a, a restaurant and hotel business project um, at the time of the lockdown. So uh, he was very fortunate in getting back the last plane to Turkey, um, you know, when the, when the lockdown uh, was enforced. Um, Three counts spent more time at home um, spending time with family and, you know, he got a chance to spend more time with his own parents, you know, both sets of parents. Uh, he did a lot of upskilling. He got three certifications. So he decided to take this time to do more learning, you know, and, um, he noticed a mindset change at his work where they were very doubtful about working from home and the productivity. Um, they only allowed two hours, oh, sorry, two days a week for, for working at home. And now it's de rigueur. So everyone is uh, is working from home. There's no no thought about whether it's productive or not because there is no other choice. Um, so um, that's uh, you know like those mindset changes we were then talking about. As soon as he talked about that mindset change, then it brought up all sorts of other ideas about mindset changes in our group as well. Um, certainly, like in terms of um, you know Peter had mentioned about uh, teaching. Now he had to do all of his teaching not at the university through his 45 minute commute but online, so that made some changes as well. And, and I know it, that our own university here was having some difficulty in like making the switch thinking that, you know, it wouldn't work doing online teaching um, and yet they've been forced to do so. So, you know, th th that in itself um, is a very tangible way in which our world was changing, but, you know, in ways in which our, um, our concepts of the earth and of how we interrelate and how we can connect and who our bubble is, you know. 
So you can consider your bubble as your your you know personal space in your in your own uh, home, or you can consider your bubble as the people that you connect with. Because now you know while you might be you know physically distanced from people in your physical space, you have the opportunity, it's really your resp responsibility now, it's not a default option of whether or not you connect with people virtually. Yeah, And so that's, that's, that's an, an amazing change as well. So there's so many other um, things that were said. I know that, uh, that um, Mohammed, uh, sorry, Tamar, my also goes about Mohammed, um, said he, he really enjoyed renovating his house and spending more time with his kids and, and postponing right. all his travel, so. Okay. Uh, uh, gonna let somebody in that made it in uh, a little bit late. Lourdes, you froze up on us. So uh, Mark said that you guys uh, had some some interesting uh, takes on on your group. Perhaps you could uh, give us a little feedback. Well, well you, I, what I said was you had said something very interesting. So please say it again to everybody. Ah. Yes, yeah, I, I was uh, telling them that in my case, um, I was was working in the last five years remotely with my services and it was some kind of hard to convince the clients that I could connect remotely and have the same service level agreements and join all the meetings and run the PMO from remotely. Um, but um, now the COVID-19 helped me because I mean, it's naturally um, understood by customer, but corporation, by corpor organizations that, I mean, it is a way and right now it is the only way because I mean, there is no option in some, some times. So um, from time to time, I was traveling to Bogota, to Ecuador, to Quito countries, takes for my customers and clients. But right now it's, it's not possible. But however, more than ever, I, 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 I feel that organizations are interested in, in the services as, payment, as remote project manager officer, you know? So for me, it has been the so I have a question, and this is for the whole group, if I may. Uh, the, we all know that we've been doing the things that we used to do in person more online, obviously. The other, uh, the other phase of, of, of... Right. But the question that I have is what can we do now online that we're connected in this way that we couldn't do before? Everybody says, oh, we can't do this or we can't do that or we can't communicate or we can't do this in person. I'm interested in the things, the new possibilities, the new things that we could do uh, that haven't even been invented yet, but we could think about them as, as new affordances of our new world. Good point. Antonio, you're doing great. You're you're driving, you're eating, and you're here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Mark, you mean in terms of professionally or in professionally? In, in other words, now we hold the we hold we do the same work that we do, but we do it remotely, like you were describing. That it's mm -hmm. it, you would do the same things more or less in person or remotely, and now people are more accepting of doing them remotely is what I think you said. And what I'm saying is, what are the new offerings that we can have because we are all connected remotely in this way? What couldn't we do before or didn't we think of doing before that now we can do? And what, uh, what uh, you know, and along with that is what Kevin Kelly said, which is some of the things we did before, like stand in front of thousands or hundreds or thousands of people and, and, and say our piece, uh, we don't have to do anymore because we can record that and pre-record it maybe even better, said Kevin Kelly. 
but mm -hmm. the other things, interactions, uh, we need to invent new ways. Breakout rooms are not the answer. Well, I have a suggestion for you, and I'll explain, I'll just narrate a little bit of an experience that I'd had um, working with Indigenous communities in Peru, which I normally would not have done unless I was actually on the ground there, um, primarily because my contact is always in, in the field. So that's, uh, that's something that I'm, that I'm doing now through an online platform that allows them to document their language, which is, has pretty much not been documented or little bits and pieces all over the world throughout, throughout time, but is now is a unified, it's a, an online platform, like an encyclopedia, living and working, breathing, very multimedia interactive encyclopedia that invites different um, communities, uh, indigenous communities especially, to work with it online or offline. Um, and then meet with coordinators to see how they themselves are uploading their language and their culture and their customs through this platform for posterity, for to share, to to you know to have translation so people can get to know one another. This oh, is not something that would have happened. It's what's called living. It's called living tongues. I'll be doing a presentation on it later when we have all of our agreements signed off with these communities. But uh, but this is something that I'm working on right now, and uh, and so Antonio knows a little bit about that because I mentioned it to him. But uh, but it's uh, it's something that I'm really happy to have done, and it's in conjunction with something that came up um, through the United Nations, their International Year, uh, sorry, Decade of Indigenous Languages, because one year in you know um, 2019 was not enough, said said the uh, population of the Earth. So. Um, they decided to dedicate a, um, a decade uh, in 2022 to 2032. And so in preparation for that, we're amplifying this dictionary, which is um, really great because the program director herself is originally um, uh, part Peruvian. So so we have a lot of buy-in from her to to help uh, document these languages. So uh, I'm really looking cool forward. Coming up. We have a cool one coming up. First off, okay. uh, Lourdes, thank you for your input. Uh, and and uh, I, I was sorry, uh, Oleg had to go for a client because uh, uh, like me, he, he speaks to large uh, audiences. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the largest one that uh, I had was uh, 1,121 people. Uh, there was no Q and A. Uh, there was, uh, you could uh, contact me later and they had the contact uh, information and uh, the event hosts uh, had a chat room that they monitored. Uh, and so any, any particular uh, uh, hot item thing come up, they would add that into the, the end of the speech. Another one that was very good that, that two of them now that, that uh, I've attended was uh, playing the video first, then take some Q&A and then going. But I've never been on it, one that was less uh, or more than rather uh, 50 people. So 50 people questions can be really kept kept at a minimum. So uh, anybody else um, have something from your groups or you just want to add in from the conversation? You know, the one thing I want to add to what you just said about lots of people and Oleg said he got 500 questions coming in. This doesn't have to be synchronous. That is a time when it can be asynchronous and when you actually can answer 500 questions because you can do it on your own time. So another model of this is you show up, you hear the thing, you have your questions, you send them to the moderator. They have agreed in advance to answer all of them and then you publish that. Yep. Very good, very good. Anybody else? I think that in education, we have a lot of changes. For example, I had the opportunity as a student uh, to get certificated. And for me, it has been very convenient because I save travel, uh, accommodation expenses, travel expenses, and get the same diploma and the same certification, you know? And also, I had the opportunity, for example, to collaborate with one university in El Salvador that it, for me is an opportunity to be a lecturer, an international lecturer without traveling. So I think in education, it has been um, 
very convenient. And I think that the world has to change toward this direction because it doesn't make many, much sense to spend in accommodation travel if you can get certificated or if you can get educated um, remotely. Yes, very good, very good. Uh, I, I too uh, taught a master class uh, in Florida sitting here in my Asheville home. In fact, I was the guest for the day. I had some one-on-ones in the morning uh, <clears throat> then I had a, a virtual lunch with uh, 30 of my closest uh, students. Uh, we all had lunch together. And then uh, I did uh, two different uh, uh, lectures in the afternoon. And that, that broke up the numbers so that the Q&A part of it was good. And the college, uh, like Mark said, college uh, handled uh, the questions as it was going in real time. I could just stay focused on, on the students which was very nice. Babak, you got in a little bit late. We're glad that you made it though. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm so glad I'm here. Well, uh, these days, uh, uh, to start some projects in Africa, and uh, obviously all we do is uh, through uh, uh, internet because uh, a team of my friends are uh, now in Cameroon and uh, we are setting up uh, all the things remotely uh, until uh, we can set a contract and move uh, there. Um, so I'm really busy these days uh, with uh, handling uh, some projects in solar plants and uh, road and mass housing construction. Um, <clears throat> And um, it's, it's very good that uh, uh, through uh, such channel of communication, uh, we can handle uh, so many things uh, that uh, maybe before uh, it was not acceptable to do it uh, remotely. But uh, it, is, uh, it is much easier these days. And I'm uh, so glad I'm involved in such initiatives. Okay, good. Well, good to see you, sir. Uh, uh, anyone else have uh, anything or did anything come to mind through the course of our, our post breakout group uh, discussions? Interesting yeah, subject, isn't it? <laughs> you know, it totally came up to me. Uh, oh, Philip, did you have something? Yeah, I was just going to say in our group, um, uh, Rosina um, did a fantastic <laughs> solo, but on a really, really important area because uh, she reflected that um, uh, she was able to travel to Porto this time last year. She you know, managed to, uh, it, was able, it, was, it was still open, but now um, she's very, very much focused with a, a, a number of different projects in different places on the whole area and question of urbanism and design. Um, and we were just discussing how the pandemic is going to open up a huge amount of project work in terms of redesigning the, um, the domestic environment, the urban environment, the office environment, <laughs> and pretty well every educational building is now probably not fit for purpose for how we're going to be working in the future, because um, we're probably not all going to remain online 100% of the time, but for sure, we're not all going to go back in person 100% of the time either. Um, and there's going to be a completely new um, style of living, and that then brings all kinds of questions um, about the totality of design of the urban space. Yeah, yeah. Very good. You know, another thing that we haven't spoken about is the fact that uh, drones are big. It's an industry now. And, and, yep. and governing the air, you know, in an earthquake area and different countries uh, are, are taking an active uh, interest in how that goes. So the, the drone operators must be certified. So that you just don't have a bunch of them 
running into each other up there in the airspace and stuff. But that, I see drones as being huge for projects, a lot about what you were just saying about Philip and, and uh, anybody else. Mark, you started to say something, I think. I saw. Uh, yeah, I did. The, the big change that I see is that community used to be thought of as people who were physically close to each other. So we send our kids, for example, where you go to elementary school or maybe even high school, depends on where you live. That is really changing. Now communities are what we're doing here. So our thinking about, and I think we need to think more about this, is what does community mean when we are freed from the location? How important is the location? in the community or is it the affinity actually the the underlying basis of the community now i would i would consider this one of my community to, to that interaction uh and uh i have another one uh group that i'm i'm in uh earlier in the week and you know we're we're on six continents 30 people six continents it's just like uh, the odds of us running in together are, are, aren't real good in the near future, but we have this incredible uh, community. So I think that's it. That's a good point. Anyone else? I wanted briefly to share a thought I've been thinking for a while. Um, it's people think that you cannot physically see uh, that you don't have like that social bonding before. And what I'm seeing and feeling is that that's not true. That's actually virtually we're creating connections, different connections than the physical ones. But once we will have the chance to meet together, we'll have extremely deep connection. I think it's hard to prove, but this is teaching to MBAs or they say, well, but we don't see each other. It's one of the best parts of the M MBA. I say, wait, wait, I think you are connecting, but bonding, but you don't see that. Yeah. yeah. Emotional human, it's that f physical uh, connection we, th we don't think about really until it's taken away. Absolutely. Good point. Well, Good I would point. argue the opposite, that, that how much do we need it? In other words, we need hugs from our, and um, we can get them from our family and if you don't get hugs you're 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 deprived but the idea of sitting down and having a meal with somebody and all this kind of stuff which was so important to our generation may be fading as something that we that the world needs in the new world we're moving into yeah i would go with that we had our anniversary uh dinner last fall uh virtually right here on zoom we had people from all over the place uh, join in. They brought their dinners with them. We had ours ordered in. I didn't even want to cook, right? Neither did Linda. So we had it right here and we had 10 people and it was delightful. We had a ball, you know? So uh, how much do we need that physical space? Maybe not so much because we're a global economy anyway. So this is just kind of reinforces that. We're, we're also able to adapt, right? Uh, we put on more clothes when it gets cold. We take, uh, for the most part, we take them back off uh, when it warms back up again, but we adapt. And unfortunately, I think we tend to adapt slowly, but in this economy, and, and I think we're more open to adapt. Yes. Anyone? Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, as I told you about uh, our projects in Africa, um, uh, truly, I haven't uh, yet uh, physically seen my con uh, connections in Africa. We are just connected uh, via WhatsApp, uh, etc. And uh, uh -huh. we found each other uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, but uh, it is uh, nearly two months that we are working close together and uh, uh, all of us feel the, the good connection and the good bond between each other uh, since early in the morning that we discuss how to approach projects and until the midnight when we are finalizing what happened and how can we process for the other day. 
So uh, what Antonio said is really true. I, I, I really felt it. Yeah, that's very good. If, if, I, yeah, if I can just make two quick uh, contributions on this. One is I think that um, <laughs> we've actually speeded up. We no longer have to wait for the physical meeting. We're, and we're also, um, this is maybe not a good thing, but uh, we're tolerant of each other's time zones. So, you know, um, having Zoom calls at eight in the morning or uh, 11 at night, you know, simply because there's somebody on the other side of the world, we do that and we just make it happen. We don't have to wait for them to get on a plane and come and meet us or vice versa. Um, in the education field, there is no doubt there's a lot of research which has been done, which shows that people don't learn as well remotely as they do in um, physically in the same location. Um, now, whether that is an issue of the technology isn't yet good enough, or there is something about being physically in the same space, um, which helps the learning process. Uh, I don't know, but uh, yeah, that, that is uh, undoubtedly the case. And um, at the moment, I would say that most education institutions would say they would prefer, never mind you know, filling classrooms, uh, but for the learning process and learning experience, um, they would prefer to have people back together again. And that's interesting okay. to me. Uh, uh, I, uh, folks, we need to end this time? on time. Okay. Uh, thank you, Antonio. Let's, let's, let's bring it up again next week and we'll kill some times because, you know, this is a subject that uh, bears repeating and, and review. So thank you all for, for uh, hopping on today and Antonio for allowing me to co-host with you today. Uh, terrific. And, Before everybody and, goes, I just wanted to let you know that in the chat, I put some links for two events uh, for International Women's Day, one for tomorrow and one for Monday. The shelter box one is very interesting on Monday. It talks about refugees and, a, and um, an innovation in helping refugees in times of disaster. So some of you might be interested in looking at that, or at least at the shelter box option. Anyway, thank you so much. Thank you, Paula. There's nobody you know that thank knows you. more about it's incredible, but uh, thank, you. thank you, Terry. Thank you, everybody. I think uh, the goal is that we learn from each other one thing. And imagine if we can learn from 50, 60 people, just one thing will be becoming so, so great and so smart. So thank you, Terry, for volunteering. We see each other in two weeks and there will be two other speakers. I don't know who's going to be presenting yet. I'll let you know, but good to see you. Thank you. Um, goodbye, Thank everybody. You, everybody. Take care. Thank you.